This program contains views and opinions that may not be suitable for all audiences. Audience discretion is advised. Welcome to Thespian Talk, everybody. I am your host, Gomer the Ranting Thespian, and my co-host this week is The Cat. Hello, everyone. Yay, we has the cat. And we didn't have a show last week because holy shit clusterfuck. Okay, so here's what happened. Last week, we had Holly on as, co as co-host, and we were supposed to have Mr. Mendo on at the same time. Well, we all got together. We got things situated. Holly's Skype currently hates her for some reason, so... It, it was a pain in the ass to get that connected. And then we finally get it connected, and then CallGraph decides, hey, you know, I'm, I'm going to tell you that you're recording, and recording is actually happening, but I'm only going to record, like, the first minute and a half of the actual recording. And so we get to the end of the show. I go to edit it, and I'm looking like, okay, yeah, I've just got to piece some stuff together. It's no big deal. No piece is over, like, two or three minutes long. It's like, I can't do this. I, I can't recover it. Even though the call graph uh, thing says, yeah, you recorded for an hour and a half, but you only saved one minute or whatever. I, I say an hour and a half, but it, it says you recorded that long, but you didn't save it. So call graph derped. And, and so I was like, all right, all right, all right, we'll just reschedule. So we reschedule. And so we get to the other day. We try to reschedule it. And that's when the local elementary school decides, hey, we're going to give the children half a day. Ah. And so, of course, we can't record with six children running around screaming their heads off because it's the middle of the day. They just got out of school for half a day, and they're excited as hell, and you cannot generally expect them to be quiet. Ah. So we've tried it again and again and again, and it's just uh, – it was a pain last week. So that's why there was no thespian talk last week. Oh, how was your week, Kat? Oh, you know, work sucked. Oh, That's no. about it. Oh, no. Uh, yeah, it's like, but but I do have some good news. I do have some good news. Uh, number one, uh, with this month's Patreon payment, along with people that have donated through the GoFundMe for uh, more web space on the site, I should be able to, in fact, I think it's pretty much confirmed at this point, that I'm going to be able to actually get one of the smaller upgrades for space on the site. So we're not going to be so tight when it comes to uploading these videos and these podcasts and everything. That would need to be uploaded directly to the site. So it's like, yes! Uh, so, wow. Oh, yeah. And the GoFundMe, I'm, I'm still going to leave it open because it's got the max of 500. And I do want to at least get up to the point to where we can get that top tier upgrade, which is basically unlimited space for all of our needs. We won't have to worry about space anymore. Won't be tearing our hair out or anything. It'll, you know, it's pretty much a one step at a time process. So everybody who has donated, I do appreciate it. Thank you. And speaking of people donating and, and all of that, I actually have a new patron. It's like, holy shit, yes, uh, Kira Kennedy. He, he became my newest became my newest patron. In fact, just yesterday as we're recording this, he became my newest patron on my birthday. Yay! So I was like, happy birthday to me. Yay! <laughs> <laughs> ah, and, and, and every little bit helps. Like I've said, every little bit does help. It'll give me a little bit more coming in. Might be able to start doing some other things that I want to do, some upgrades that I want to get. Probably in November because a lot of the upgrade stuff is going towards the site this month. Because <laughs> just for the smallest one, it's 50 bucks for a year. So, yeah. And I don't quite pull in that much to be able to do that and other upgrades. But that's okay. I've got a few other things in, in the works as well that I'm working on. I've still got the last two uh, AVGN Adventures videos that are going to be going live in the next couple of weeks. Then I'm going to be starting on a, a, a game trilogy as I'm – calling it uh one older game two newer games um okay okay it's the bionic commando trilogy because <laughs> those are fun uh, uh those are fun i've got the two newest ones off a deal on steam and i i've not played through them yet they're they're gonna be pretty much blind but the old one i've played so many times i'm just gonna like go through it and i know how i want to split up the videos on that one so I'm, I'm gonna try some new different things and oh so so one of the, one of the things over the past couple of weeks was the whole Family Guy Simpsons crossover episode finally happened. Did you watch it, Kat? No, I did not because actually I'm one of the few uh, nerds who likes neither shows. 
Okay. And to be fair, I didn't really watch it either. Although from everything that I've heard about it, it just pretty much exemplifies the fact that Simpsons, in terms of the characters, that the way they are written, the Simpsons are much better people than the Griffins on Family Guy. <laughs> I'd believe like, it. Yeah, I would too. But there was one thing I don't rem- I don't know if it made it into the final thing, but it was in a promo where they were doing the old um, uh, the prank call to Moe's Tavern with Bart and Stewie. And Bart does his thing, and it's all that, and Stewie's like, oh, I want to try it. And so he he makes the call, and instead of doing what Bart did, Stewie just screams out to Moe, your sister's going to be raped, or your sister was raped, or something like that. And that naturally causes causes some controversy, I would imagine. Go figure. Yeah, because, you know, hey, I mean, you got people be like, you know, it's at the, the expense of such and such. And Tony Goldmark, he actually posted a thing about this on his Facebook and it's like, you know, you know I, I'm one of those people that subscribe to the George Carlin theory of you can joke about anything depending on how you construct the joke. This particular joke, uh, as if be that as it may, you call it a joke, you call it whatever, it just doesn't work. At least not for me and not for a lot of people. And it just it's just uh, – I mean it's unfortunate that it was – you know it had to do with rape, but – even if it didn't have rape, it would it would still kind of just fall flat because it's just relying on the shock value and pot- potential nervous laughter. I, I I admit, sometimes I'll see something on Family Guy, and they'll at least get a nervous chuckle out of me, like, ah, you're going that direction. Okay. <laughs> this one, nothing. So it, it just kind of fails all over the place. Oh, lordy. Oh, God. <laughs> and, and then speaking of fail... You know, uh, what was it, like a couple of months ago, Tracy Morgan was in that horrible accident with the trucker and the Walmart trucker and everything. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I heard about that. Yeah. Well, I learned within the past week or two that Walmart is faulting Tracy Morgan for not wearing a seatbelt during the car accident. Okay. Because I understand they want they're, – they're, I understand they're trying to cover their ass because they don't want to have to pay an arm and a leg because one of their drivers was stupid and didn't get enough rest and fell asleep at the wheel and caused an accident which killed one – which killed the guy and, and you know uh, 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 injured Tracy Morgan, you know, just injuring people to begin with. Yeah, you, 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 you know, as scummy as it is, I understand, you know, the, the cover your ass thing, but guys – this is not the battle to be fighting. It's pretty clear your driver under your employ, you are liable. Just take your lumps and go with it. Walmart, you can afford it. I mean, uh, it was just, oh, God, it was just what the fuck, Walmart? What the fuck? Uh, <laughs> speaking of which, um, I was actually listening to a whole binge of what the fuck – when I was on my way back from uh, uh, well, yeah, from Fort Knox rather with my cousin because he's come down to visit. Then he's stationed off in Hawaii. So a lot of fun. And we got to the episode where you and Josh talked about the uh, people who thought they were being attacked in my home county, by the way. Oh, yeah. Yeah, those those people. Yeah. I, I told him flat out, you know, this took place right over in like, like fucking Mariana Grand Ridge or whatever. And he's like, really? I'm like, yeah. That, that's what I call the trifecta story because we covered it on this show. You guys covered it on What the Fuck, and Nash even brought it up on What the Fuck is Wrong with You. <laughs> so I was like, that's a trifecta story. <laughs> and both me and, and Steve the Wicked took plenty of drinks. Fucking <laughs> <laughs> uh, Florida, man. Fucking Florida. Fucking Florida, yeah. You take one shot for Florida stories, take two if it's in my home county. That, and, and trust me, you'll know when it is. <laughs> that, that's the new rule of the drinking game. Oh, but speaking of news, uh, or actually, no, not even the news yet, because we got shout. We actually got shout outs. I'm going to go out on a limb and assume you don't have any. You are correct, sir. I am correct. Damn. <laughs> oh, of course. But I actually I actually do have one. Uh, and it is Scott Murray, which can't you, you I know you've heard the name. You know, uh, Josh is now former Lost in the Static co-host. Uh, he's got his own channel going. Um. S. Murray 751, and he's doing a series of uh, Let's Play videos with his wife. And I, I watched his two, now at this point, two uh, Stanley Parable videos, and 
just what just listening to her just kind of make her way through the game and him just talking talking to her helping her through it and everything it's it's really a sight to behold and it's very hilarious so i i suggest everybody go check it out i think he i think he's calling it a old guy games or old man games or something like that but go and check it out again if you want it on youtube it's s murray 751 and that's m u r r a y for those who need need that spelled oh so yeah, check it out. It's funny. It's great. Um, but some stuff. Well, we got some good stuff. We got some bad stuff for the news this week. <laughs> and the first one, I put it in here because I just want to. Oh God, the folks over at Fox News were shocked. Shocked. To hear, shocked and appalled, I tell you. Yes, shocked and very appalled to hear President Obama taking a dig at them on Thursday. The full joke went. While good, affordable health care might seem like a fanged threat to the freedom of the American people on Fox News, it's working pretty well in the real world. Granted, Obama takes digs at Fox News all the time. Note this, but no matter. Multiple shows took the time to hit back at the president. There was Greta Van Susteren, Susteren? who opined that Obama was not acting presidential and needed to be tougher and stop blaming Fox News for his problems. No. You know, Obama is not perfect. He's done some things. Admittedly, his own – he does have his own failings. But a good chunk of them – I'm going to say a good chunk of them – are not necessarily because of him directly. It's because of the, the Republican Party, of the GOP. They just stand there like a child who is just, just doesn't want to do anything. Shaking their heads like, nope, 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 not going to do it because they they don't like the Democrat or black man in office. You know, take your pick. And, and it's like, no, no. And, and, uh, and, he, and this joke, it's not really blaming Fox News for his problems. People take digs at Fox News all the time. You know, I'll take digs at Fox News. Does that mean I'm blaming them for whatever problems I have? No. No, it's, but you're not the president either. Yeah. And and. Who's to say what is acting presidential and what is not? I mean, is it presidential that he has sex with his wife? Is that presidential? Or is it more presidential for him to be completely celibate? You know, to, to go things on that route. Or was it presidential when, you know, I, th I think there was like this whole big thing when it was revealed that he was a smoker at one point. I don't know if he still does. Wouldn't surprise me if he still is because <laughs> – that's a stressful position he's got, but you know, is that less than presidential? Even though we've had presidents who smoked before, I mean, just just what is the what is the definition of presidential? I wonder. Or or in in the case of Fox News, is it only presidential when he's bending over and taking whatever dick they're trying to shove up his ass? Yes. Well, I mean, that's what Fox News wants. I mean, that's. Well, I mean, in their opinion, like nobody is presidential except uh, Republican candidates and such and so forth because they are that close minded. Yeah, pretty much, which means, you know, hmm. on Bill O'Reilly's show, Laura Ingram fumed that Obama was employing a classic Alan Skite? Alan? What? I, I, A L I N S K Y I T E. Alan Skite tactic. Because liberalism, Obama style, is failing. Is failing. Um, um, I, I don't think liberalism is failing. This is, once again, the whole... Um, better than anybody else, Fox is guilty of projection. Mm -hmm. Where they have faults about themselves and they project those onto other people. Oh, yeah. They are, like, classic. <laughs> Very much so. The Five was also ticked off. I, I, I haven't seen the five. I, I don't even I don't even know if I want to know this one. He bashes FNC more than ISIS and we don't behead anybody, Greg Gutfield said. Of course you don't behead anybody because that's illegal. Uh, now of course what ISIS is doing is is fucked up. I, I admit I don't have much, but I understand they're just like, you know, they're killing people for perceived slights or, or, or even slights that are ne necessarily dangerous, from my understanding. Um, do you know anything more about it or? or... Um, well, ISIS is kind of too big of a topic for just bringing up, but the idea that uh, 
um, they don't want to qualify. Uh, Fox doesn't want to qualify themselves as a terrorist organization. I think is kind of ridiculous. Yeah, considering what was it? What was it? Oh God, what was it? A couple of years ago, was it? Wasn't it? Uh, I want to say it was Bill O'Reilly who was saying something about George Tiller, like you know somebody needs to take him out or whatever, and then somebody did. Uh, Fox is more responsible for creating unnecessary fear in this country than probably anything else. Ebola evokes less fear in the population than Fox News. Because oh. Fox wants you to be afraid of the things they want you to be afraid of so they can sell you a line um, and pretend like they have the answers. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, Fox News does not have the answers. And, and if they do happen to have an answer that is an actual answer that it would be for the betterment of the human race, then that will surprise me enough to the point where I will probably just – implode or something i don't know that would that would shock me to that point because uh, I, I don't i don't think fox news has it in them at this point yeah Just... now, now now to be fair i don't really have anything against republicans the republican party is not inherently evil um and i feel the need to clarify this right. um but fox news is scum and okay. i'm not saying msnbc is perfect but fox news is evil Yes, they're evil, and, and, and you know somebody who wants to say, "Oh, there's evil on the airwaves." Fox News. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> yeah. Let me. Let me. I. I need to remember that the next time somebody goes about evil on on daytime soap operas. Mm. Oh. But our next one is still dealing with politics, and and in this case, the military. And we can qualify. You know, I qualify by saying, you know, I'm a military brat. Cat, you're a military brat. Indeed. Um. And so, you know, we, we have this we, – we have our qualifications here. Um, Colorado U.S. Representative Doug Lamborn said that behind the scenes, he and other Republican members of Congress – oh, there are our friends again – were encouraging military officers to resign in protest over President Obama's foreign policy. <laughs> yeah, because that's not oh going to God. mess up their lives, isn't it? Let me reassure you on this, Lamborn told a small gathering of so-called Liberty voters in Colorado Springs on Tuesday. A lot of us are talking to the generals behind the scenes saying, hey, if you disagree with the policy that the White House has given you, let's have a resignation. You know, let's have a public resignation and state your protest and go out in a blaze of glory. I haven't seen very much of that. In fact, I haven't seen that at all in years. Oh, excuse me. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. yeah, go ahead. I was just going to say, these are the people who don't actually understand the military. Telling somebody you should resign from the military to make a statement. The president is the commander in chief. I don't care if you don't like him or not. He makes the decisions. You are not going to go quit your job in a huff. Um, and slam your boss while you're at it because you may actually want to ever be employed again. Yeah, because, you know... The way we kind of we kind of worship the military in this country, you you do something like this, you quit because you don't agree with the commander in chief over something that is part of your job, that is going to be have a huge negative impact on you. You you are going to be blacklisted from pretty much anywhere. I mean, I'm sure there will be some places that'll hire you. Probably some Italians over in Jersey will hire you if you get what I mean, but you know, odds are most places, they're not going to give a shit. McDonald's probably won't even hire you. I mean, they might, but you'd be overqualified and they oh, wouldn't yeah. want to. But, you know, yeah, it, it's like it, the military people, like a lot of other citizens, have to act responsibly because, it, you know, people who just up and quit their jobs may have a hard time finding their next job because they are professionals. Yes. Um, and yeah, this is just not a professional thing to do. And the fact that they're trying to encourage generals now, now the Republicans worship the military more than most, and they are always on the military side, or at least they say they are, but they haven't really behaved like that lately. And I don't think they really have as many friends in the military as they used to. Yeah, because it's just, oh God, it's like. Yeah, you, know, you know, tell them, yeah, you resigned. You know, never mind that their lives are going to be ruined. They're, you know, everything that I've said before is going to come to pass. It's just not going to be good. It's and, and, not. 
And no offense, but only Republicans would see petulantly standing up and going nanny nanny boo boo at the president as going out in a blaze of glory. When you're talking to military generals, their idea of a blaze of glory is going to be way different. Yeah, that that's going to be, you know, dying in the heat of battle, getting blown up by the enemy. That's going out in a blaze of glory. With machine guns and killing lots of terrorists and blah, it, it involves like Rambo stuff. This is this is not how military people see their blaze of glory. No, no, it's just ugh. oh god. So uh, the comments were first published by reporter Corey Hutchins at Medium Today. Uh, Hutchins played the tape he made at the event over the phone for the Independent. The Colorado Independent also confirmed the quotes with at least one other person who was in attendance, but Hutchins taped the remarks and he told the Independent that among the rough 50 people at the night, at, that night at the bar basement event, at least a few were videotaping the speakers. Lamborn sits on the House Armed Services Committee. House Armed Services Committee. So he's he's in a position that, that works with the military, if, if I've got this right. And he's telling them to resign. Dude, what the fuck? Uh, the 34 member, Republican members of the committee include South Carolina's Joe Wilson, who made headlines around the country when he shouted out with a red face during President Obama's September 2009 address to Congress with, You're a liar! Mm -hmm. I remember that. And I remember Obama's reaction. He just looked at him and pointed out, like, like, you. <laughs> that, was, that was great. Just one look. Yeah. Also on the committee is Colorado's sixth, di sixth District Congressman Mike Kaufman, who is running for re-election this year in one of the closest races in the country. While running in 2012, Kaufman, a former Marine, told a crowd at a fundraising event that although he didn't know whether or not the president was born in the United States, Kaufman believed that the commander-in-chief in his heart was not an American. God damn it. Really? Uh, 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 Folks, because I know there are going to be people out there that still believe it. The president is American. Just because he's not white doesn't mean he's not American. Just because he wasn't born in this country doesn't mean he's not American. I wasn't born in this country. I'm really goddamn American. Same here. Same here. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I mean, you were, you, you were born what, Japan? I was born in Germany. Oh, God, I was born in Germany. I must be a Nazi. Holy shit. Dude, I lived in Germany and I was born in Japan. I've got two out of the three access countries under my belt and I've been to Italy. Oh, um, shit. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Oh, oh, wait, wait. Italy, Italy. I know, wasn't Doug Walker born somewhere in Europe? I want to say he was born in Italy. I'm not sure. Know. But so, we could really get this going on if we really wanted to. Yeah, we could. It's just holy shit. Oh, Lordy. So, in, in short, it goes on a little bit, a little bit, and there are some people speaking out against him, naturally, not just us. And in short, if you're in the military, when you're in the military, when you go through all that training, you are trained to follow the orders of your commanding officer or the commander in chief, you know, whoever's giving the order at the time. That's what you're supposed to do. You know, you, do, you don't not follow orders. And if you don't follow orders, you could get court-martialed. You could get, you know, uh, uh, um, word is escaping me. Uh, you could get kicked out. You know that sort of discharged. thing. Discharged. Discharged. Thank you. And not honorably either. <laughs> yeah, you could get dishonorably discharged. Yeah. The whole idea is that the president, no matter what you think about him, the president is the commander in chief. And if you have a problem with that, and if you have a problem with the way the system works. And following the orders of somebody that you disagree with, you're in the wrong line of work. Right. <laughs> very, very much right. Oh, uh, so our next one, and I want I want to preface this that this next one, it's potentially a hoax. Kat, oh. you you posted this one. Oh my god, this is the funniest thing. Okay, so um oh, somebody gonna... has currently put this up on Snopes, but there's no confirmation that this has really happened. But if it did, then this is one of the dumbest things I've ever heard. Um, yes. So apparently, and this is uh, in Colombia, mm -hmm. where um, there is a story coming out that a woman <clears throat> put a potato in her vagina um, as a form of uh, like a contraception. Because that works. 
a contraceptive um and uh that it like grew roots and i actually can't even talk about this because it's so profoundly disturbing <laughs> oh yeah um, it's really gross it's just no you don't do that for one thing I, I haven't tested this, but I don't think the potato is going to work too well in, in blocking sperm. I, I just don't think. I, I Again, admittedly, I haven't tested this, and I don't think there is a woman that I know would be who would be willing to let me test this. You know, so, I mean, the most I could do is, I mean, what, 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 was, what would one expect to happen? Was, is the, the potato supposed to, like, absorb the semen or something? Sure, why not? It's I mean, I, like butter. It's like butter. Like butter. <laughs> so, so if this is true, then um, this occurs, um, and this is not the first time that this has been heard about. There's um, rumors, like a few years ago, that people were going around doing this just due to lack of knowledge of sex education, because this is apparently a country where people just don't talk about it. Um, not They don't even go into abstinence only. They simply just don't talk about it. It's considered so scandalous and so salacious to even mention it that they just don't. And when you don't talk about it, and you just hear secondhand information of how to have babies or not have babies, what are you supposed to do? What do you believe? Yeah. And and, and, and I, th- I think you might have mentioned it. I don't remember if you did, but, but the mother told the do- told the woman, her mother told her that, uh, yeah, if you don't want to get pregnant, put a potato up there. You know, never mind that you have the internet. And I don't know about you, but even, even I, w- I would assume that even the most ignorant, I mean, obviously not all of the most ignorant because, well, supposedly she did it. But would think, okay, yeah, potato up the snatch doesn't sound like a good thing, just doesn't. And uh, but but this goes back to lack of education. Mm-hmm. If you don't have access to the internet and it's a taboo subject that you can barely bring up with your parents without feeling shamed for it, then how do you know what's real and not? There's plenty of stuff in the world that doesn't make sense. This is true. This makes as much sense as looking under a cow and looking at the udders and going, I'm going to drink something that comes out of that. This is true. Thankfully, it's it worked to our fa- worked to our advantage and in our favor. Yes. Unlike the potato in the vagina. Yeah. Although, according to this story, you know, again, if it's true, then the, the offending root vegetable was removed without the need for surgery, and there should be no lasting physical effects on the young woman. We should hope. Yeah, I, I really do hope so. It's like, is that... Wait, put it in the vagina, and it's like how, I'm just curious how they got it out. Did they just get like like the salad spoons or something and just pull it out? Or I'm I'm sure it involved cold metal instruments. <laughs> I, I I don't even have that equipment, and I'm just like <laughs> <laughs> right. It's like I don't even want to think about it. Men don't even want to think about it. When I posted this article on my Facebook, the horrified reactions were immense. Yeah, and, and and like I said, I was like, I was like, you know, I I know you 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 posted it for Josh to look at, and I'm like, you know what, fuck it, I'm running with it anyway, because <laughs> it's like, yeah, this this just, oh my god, because I know there are some people that listen to this who don't listen to what the fuck and vice versa. So you know, the more people out there, and if any one of them finds any evidence that this is not true, or if it is true, let us know. And then because we, we want to know. Because then, if it is true, we can say, this is what's wrong with the world, we need education. And then if it's not true, we can go, this is what's wrong with the world, people posted this lie. And that's really messed up, because that's gross, and nobody really wants to hear about this. Yeah, and not only that, not only did somebody post about this, this has been run on more major news organizations. So it's just, wow, it's getting around. I, I th- want to say there was some on the Huffington Post or, 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 or at least CNN or something. I want to say, I'm um, going by memory here, <laughs> but I mean but... everything traces back to a single article on the on a Colombian web page. Mm-hmm. So, I mean it's probably going to be a little while before we know for sure if it was a hoax or not. But apparently this isn't the first time where people have kind of talked about this. Mm-hmm. So. 
that sort of lends it credibility, but it's so ridiculous sounding. How can it possibly be true? Yeah. Well, then again, you've also got, you know, women who will try and shave their pubes while driving down the road. Mm -hmm. uh, thank you, Nash. Oh, and, and that actually happened in Florida, which is where our next story happens. Awesome. <laughs> Gaines... Love when we talk about fucking Florida. Yes, take a shot. Gainesville, Florida. And if you live in Gainesville or in its county, take two shots. Um, a Florida woman may pursue legal action against police and prosecutors after she spent more than a month in jail for possession of SpaghettiOs. Oh, yeah, I talked about this on What the Fuck. <laughs> hey, who knows? It, it, it might be the episode that comes out alongside this one. Who knows? We'll find out. <laughs> Police say they arrested 23-year-old Ashley, Ashley Gabriel Huff after they found a spoon covered with a suspicious residue inside the car she was riding in. From the beginning, Huff insisted that she wasn't using, selling, or making methamphetamines. No, but she could have been doing heroin, which obviously she wasn't, but, you know, heroin, if I remember right, that's, that's you use the spoon and the stuff and it's kind of red. So, and I don't think it's a methamphetamine you know, of any kind, it's just, you know, heroin. Yeah. The woman spent more than a month in jail while her attorney tried to arrange a plea bargain. That's when the crime lab report came back confirming the spoon was encrusted with spaghetti sauce. She was then released from custody. Police say they were acting in good faith, and Huff may now pursue legal action against the police departments, the jails, and the DA's office for malicious prosecution and unlawful arrest. You Do you realize how long it would take to just test the spoon? All you have to do is just take it, look at it, smell it. If you're brave, you, you do the taste test, and then there you go. I mean, I mean, it should not take a month to where you have to hold this person just because you're suspicious of them. You know, five minutes tops. That's all it should take. Yeah, seriously, it shouldn't even take that. You should look at the spoon and go, what's on this? And she'd say, SpaghettiOs, and then you could smell it and go, yeah, fucking smells like SpaghettiOs. Yeah, it's just, god damn, god damn it, Florida. Like, seriously. <laughs> and and this person is, this is not like a shady person who looks like they could be running drugs out of their car. This is somebody who is a parent. And I have been assured by other parents that if you are a parent and your child has ever been in your car, that there is, in fact, a SpaghettiO encrusted spoon somewhere in the car. Yeah. Hell, we have a double for us. Was We got... We have two cars here. We'll take kids in one or the other sometimes. And I'm, you know, come across one just the other day. I'm driving along. Hey, where'd this spoon come from? Uh, you know, it happens. Oh, Lordy. So she's going to sue them, and I hope she wins because this is so fucking embarrassing for, the, for that particular police department in a time where you really don't want to be a policeman fucking up that, uh, yeah, they should just swallow their pride and give her some money. Yeah. To make it go away. Yeah, police fucking up to the point to where even the Department of Justice is telling officers, like, over in Ferguson and shit, like, yeah, those, those, those Darren Wilson bands, you know, that I am Darren Wilson, stop wearing them! You know, and it's just, yeah, it's pretty bad. Uh, and, and if we want more Ferguson, I I try and reblog everything I can on Tumblr. So that that's where all that information is. I'm not going to be bringing that up too much on the show unless something really huge happens. You know, like yeah. like if it becomes a crater or something, then you know, yeah, obviously we're going to bring it up. And, obviously. and I live in St. Louis, so I actually don't ever need to talk about it because it's all my news feed is made up of. Yeah, which I, I admit some of that is me with the reblogs and then the cross posting and stuff. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> no, it's all the local news. I follow like all the local news stations and newspapers and stuff. And yeah, that's all it's filled with. Yeah, it's like, yeah, Ferguson here, Ferguson here. But this old lady, she she did something awesome. Ferguson, Ferguson! Uh, Ferguson is important, but we can't focus on that completely. We just can't. We'd shut down. We we occasionally almost get hit by tornadoes. We do need to focus on other things. Yeah, that that, that is a thing. You are in Tornado Alley. Mm. But uh, speaking of parents, upset parents demanded this week that Kings Canyon Unified School District remove a book intended for freshman English classes. Bear in mind, this is high school that one father said is inappropriate, amoral and disgusting. Wait, so they're, they're going to ban the Bible? Oh, I wish. <laughs> no, no, no books really should be banned. But if you're going to ban anything for the content, 
you know, have you actually read your Bibles, folks? Come on. You know, you've got incest, you've got mass murder, you've got genocide. That's just the first three off the top of my head. You know, it's just saying. <clears throat> All parents send their children to school with the exception of tr expectation, rather, of trust that they will be safe and protected from all forms of harm, Jeff Claxton told school board members at their meeting on Tuesday, September 23rd. If you allow this title to be taught to our children, you will have failed. Uh, wow. Because apparently ignorance and safety are the same thing. Yeah, they're not. A crowd of about 50 people packed the small boardroom, and a majority of them came to protest the use of Black Swan Green at Reedley High. The 2006 novel is the story of, a th of 13 months and the life of a 13-year-old boy in England Excuse me, in the early 1980s. In one passage of the 294-page book, the boy watches a couple have sex and describes what he sees. The school district's position has been that ninth graders would only read two excerpts, not the entire book, and that neither of the excerpts deals with sex, which would be fine, except these are high schoolers and they're going to be naturally curious and maybe want to read the whole book. But a parent has filed a complaint with the district about the book, which some say is pornographic in its description of the sex scene, blasphemous in several references to Jesus, and profane because it contains the F word and other vulgar language. Wait. You, you, you're you finding it profane because it has the word fondue? <laughs> no, I know what word they're talking about. But <laughs> I was like, oh, no. Don't don't let George, don't let these parents hear George Carlin's seven, you know, dirty words you can't say on television routine. Oh, my God. Shit pace. Fuck, cut, motherfucker. Yeah, fuck. I fucked it up. But that's okay. Fuck, I fucking fucked it up. Fuck, 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 fuck. Yes, fuck, 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 fuck. Fondue. Yes. Yes. Four people spoke at the school board meeting during the time allotted for public comment on the book. When they finished, school board president Noel Remick said a committee will make a determination about the book and report its findings to the superintendent. The issue may then come to the school board if necessary, Remick said. District staff and parents will be on the committee, Deputy Superintendent for Human Resources John Campbell said after the meeting. We value the input of parents and community members, and we have every confidence in the review process, Campbell said. Parent Loya Kanawayer... Can I wear? Can I wear? Spoke first against Black Swan Green. If I have to hear one more time, we're only using excerpts. We're, we'll all throw up. Excerpts could lead students to reading the whole book, Kanawire said. An enthusiastic reader could very well get their hands on the worst language I have seen and the most graphic scenes of lust and fornication. Well. Oh no! You oh. don't let your child watch TV or movies? Oh no! No wonder your child is turning to books for their porn. I know, right? Or, you know, you, you this, this is probably the kind of parent that reads those smutty uh, Walmart romance novels. And I'm willing to bet your same child could go and find this book on the back of your toilet and read it and, and do the whole thing, you know? <laughs> They're not as explicit in terms of language, but they are explicit in terms of imagery. And yes, how do I know? Take a wild guess. Uh. So I was like, oh, no, they could read and get ideas that are not mine. Oh! It's like, I, honestly, honestly, let's let's just talk about this. If you think that a high school freshman hasn't heard foul language or has never seen a sexual act, you are living under a veil of ignorance. Yeah. Cause... You may think that your super special child is innocent and perfect, but they are probably lying to you. Because honestly, I've, throughout my fucking entirety of high school, read books that had profanity and had sex. They had rape in them. And, oh, look, I didn't go bonkers and go crazy and go start swearing and, and raping and all of this other stuff. Because you know what? We got that exact same shit in middle school. Yeah. Oh, <sighs> God damn, people. This this whole idea, oh no, my my son or daughter can't read this book. It'll it'll make them into a terrible person. No, it will open up their minds. This is what a lot of books, not all books, but this is what books you're taught in school are for. They're there to teach some sort of lesson, to show you some aspect of the world. And if you don't want your child um, experiencing different things, then you need to fucking homeschool them and let them live sheltered and ignorant of the world. 
But that's not what high school is there for. That's not what schooling should be there for at all. Schooling is there to teach you things so that when you go out into the real world, like the grown-up world where people have sex and swear, that you are prepared for that. Exactly. And if you're not prepared for that, you're going to fucking drown. Yeah, you're going to drown. You're going to end up back at your parents' place when you're 32 years old. Wait. <laughs> oh, I'll, I'll almost describe myself there. No, I'm not that bad. Thankfully, <laughs> I am not that bad. Uh, although I am at my parents' place and I'm 32. I'm trying desperately to get out of here. <sighs> but anyway, our, our next one, because uh, – yeah, we're going to the next one because Cap – Pretty much nailed it all on the head there. <laughs> it's, not, it's a role reversal. I like it. Uh, one might call it chutzpah, as several irate lawmakers did, or rubbing salt in the wounds of the American taxpayer. But to a few Wall Street financiers, a lawsuit that accuses the government of shortchanging the American International Group in its 2008 bailout is something else. <laughs> a burp, maybe. <laughs> a, <laughs> a promising investment. Classy. Yes, we are a classy show. Mm. It, but it's if it's a promising investment in a cause they support. Maurice R. Greenberg, 89, the former AIG chief executive who still holds a large stake in the insurance company, filed the lawsuit on behalf of fellow shareholders. He has now raised several million dollars from three Wall Street companions to help cover the cost of the case. The investors, who are entitled to a cut of any damages Mr. Greenberg collects from the government, contributed about 15% of the tens of millions of dollars in legal costs, according to people with knowledge of the arrangement. Six years after the government saved Wall Street from the brink of collapse, the lawsuit is coming to trial, reopening one of the ugliest chapters in modern financial history. The trial, which begins next week in Washington, will most likely hinge on testimony from the policymakers who orchestrated AIG's rescue, including former Federal Reserve Chairman Ben S. Bernanke and former Tre Treasury Secretary Timothy F. Geithner. So what I've got from this, the, 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 this guy, the former AIG chief executive, is suing the government because they only saved his ass. But and didn't save his ass. Plus, give him a shitload of money. <laughs> That's what I'm getting here. Is like you didn't give us enough. We bailed you the fuck out. You didn't give us enough. We don't give NASA enough. You've got plenty, asshole. Yeah, which is very obvious because how many millions of dollars have you raised for this lawsuit? Hey, asshole! Instead of raising it for a lawsuit, tell your millionaire buddies to invest it back in the goddamn company. I mean, hi, there's your money. Fuck you. Ah. Oh, son of a bitch. It's like, really? Or, or, or even better, even better. You know, you, you, you know, you brought up NASA. NASA's underfunded. How about you do something good and tell your cronies, okay, you know what, you know what? Fuck this. We are bailed out. We're business is good. You know, go throw money at NASA so we could actually start building spaceships and start living the Doctor Who future that we want to live. That we so rightfully deserve. Yeah. And by the way, yes, I did watch the new Doctor Who, and I, I think you did too. Uh, yes. Oh, God. <laughs> uh, we could have a whole discussion on the last scene alone. Yeah, because that's just, holy shit. That took a turn. Yeah, it did. Sharp left turn. Yeah, and and you know what? I, I, think, I think somebody commented on... Uh, I think it was like uh, your Facebook post that they could see both sides of that particular argument. You know, you know, not to give too much spoiler away because, well, you know, arguments happen between Clara and the Doctor all the time. Uh, but I can be on both sides of that argument and understand them both. So it's and like, still want to slap the Doctor so hard he regenerates. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh God, just just. But the rest of the episode, I thought it was all right. You know, I thought it was fun. Uh, anyway, uh, if, we, if we have time, we might go a little bit more in depth. But we got another story here out of Nashville, Tennessee. Yeah, I've been through Nashville a couple of times in the past month or two. Leonard Embody is no stranger to police. He's been arrested or detained numerous times for walking around town with guns. Oh, one of those guys. His charges were all eventually dismissed, which may explain why he wasn't arrested on Wednesday as he paraded up and down the sidewalk in front of Hillsboro High School. Yeah, because that's not going to freak out people, are they? Is it? Yeah. Good lord. 
Witnesses say Ibadi was pacing Hillsborough Road, dressed much like a soldier, and it had a lot of people nervous. You don't think? So nervous that 911 dispatchers had their hands full. He had a rifle across his back and a GoPro attached to his chest. I just thought it was kind of peculiar, one caller said. Peculiar? Yes. Unheard of? Not so much. And by the way, that is the exact wording of the article. <laughs> that is not me. Excuse me again. I just saw some weirdo. I think that's the same nut I saw on television, another caller said. <laughs> well, over the past five years, Embody has been causing a stir everywhere from Rander Lake to downtown Nashville. However, mothers like Talisha Cobb say that doing this in front of a school is crossing a line. That man may not be worried about the epidemic of school shootings in our country, but moms and dads are, and we won't tolerate this behavior, Cobb said. When Channel 4 met up with Embody on Thursday, he offered no apologies and even called Wednesday's demonstration a success. A school is a prime place to be able to hand out my leaflets and education, ch educate children that guns aren't as dangerous as people think they are. <laughs> Certainly a man carrying a gun doesn't mean they're going to get shot, he said. <laughs> no, but with the way things have been, the have you paid attention at all since Columbine? Oh, God. <laughs> or even, even before Columbine. Have you paid attention at all, you idiots? You know, you know what happens when somebody with a gun and a camera it is pacing around a high school or any kind of school, really. That's when a school goes on lockdown and the cops are called and that person is detained because they are a threat. Yeah, or even a perceived threat. Even if even if it is like this guy, you know, just just kind of you no, know, I don't want to say innocent, but harmless. You know, N he's not just even surveilling. harmless. Yeah. It's just ignorant. Okay, that that's a better word for it. And it's just no, dude, no. Stop walking around, patrolling the area, trying to compensate for your tiny penis, and just, just, just put the guns away. Okay, Second Amendment, sure. You know, fine. You know, you have the right to bear arms. You do. You really do. Nobody's taking your guns away. And the fact that you have guns, okay, fine, whatever. Good for you. Great. Fine. Just pat yourself on your special fucking back, there, dude. Yeah. And it's just, you know, you know, it, it's like your dick. Yeah. You have one? Great. We don't want to see it. We just don't. We don't need to see it. If you really cared about educating people about their rights to have guns and bear arms and do it safely, then there are other ways to go about it. Parading around in public places with firearms is not a way to make fucking people feel safe. It is just, it's not. People feel differently about guns and to go around with dressed like a soldier with rifles is not making everybody feel safe. And for you to go around and think that is just your ignorance. Yeah. And you know, what's scary. He is not the only one that has been reported and seen and photographed pulling this kind of bullshit. Not necessarily the exact same degree he is, but there are people walking around in department stores wearing their gun rifles on their backs because open carry. And you know what? They're all white. Because I'm willing to bet, and and this goes back to a news story. I don't remember if we reported it or if one of – or, or if what the fuck reported it or whatever, but the guy who was just checking out a BB gun in Walmart, black guy checking out a BB gun in Walmart, had the cops called on him, and they killed him on sight practically is, is, is what I believe it – is about Pre how I believe it went. Pretty much how I remember that story going too. Yeah. So it's like, yeah. Yeah, uh-huh, yeah. You see a black person exercising the same rights, especially in Tennessee? He's gonna get shot. So, no. This is just, just, uh-uh, no. This is, this is a really, uh, I don't know how to describe this. This is people who don't understand that other people feel differently about stuff, and they think they can change people's minds without really respecting those people. They go, oh, well, I'm going to demonstrate my rights and maybe I can change somebody's mind by walking around with a gun on me, fully visible that somebody could easily rip off my back and shoot me with and steal my gun, whatever. They don't accept the idea that that doesn't make other people feel safe or good at all. If I saw somebody in a fucking department store walking around with a rifle, I would fucking leave that store immediately and potentially call the cops. 
yeah, I I tend to agree with that one. It's like, nope, nope, not out of there. Just no, no, no. Probably Just take... because wearing a gun makes you feel big and tough and manly and safe doesn't make other people feel that way and you're not going to change that by doing it and then acting like an a-hole that everybody should just believe what you say because that same person carrying a gun on their back could be just as likely to kill you you don't know just by looking at a person if they're psychotic or not that's the world we live in and you you can't just magically make people think differently right i mean and 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 here's another thing he said too i don't think i look terrifying other people may think I look terrifying, but that's in their own minds, and that's something they should deal with. With maybe a psychologist. You, motherfucker, you just call everybody else crazy because we think you look terrifying? And I'm going to say we because I would probably be terrified myself. Like, why is this motherfucker walking down my street with a rifle? Is he going to shoot out my windows? Is he going to shoot me? Is he going to shoot my family? Is he going to shoot somebody down the road? What the fuck, dude? Like, there there are just too many instances of people just getting shot in public places, school shootings, theater shootings. Um, I went to school during the age of the D.C. sniper, where you could just be walking to school or pumping your gas at a gas station, and you would just be shot. Yeah, for no reason. Just For no reason at all. And somehow, we should be expected to immediately picture guns as not scary and guns as being something safe yeah i mean you know i don't mind guns in and of themselves you know by themselves they're harmless you know my dad has like a a case of you know not a case but yeah i I think a case uh, of shotguns you know a rack rather you know and they are locked away they are safe and and since the kids have been living around here i don't think he's ever brought them out because, well, number one, there are kids running around here, and number two, he's had no need to. So, you know, then that's the way it should be. Yeah, you have guns, great for home defense, sure. Okay, you know, use it responsibly. But this is the kind of guy I'm willing to bet who would probably leave his rifle just laying on the coffee table. And, well... You know, bad things could happen that way because, you know, he might have a child that comes over, you know, like a nephew or a niece or or even if he has his own spawn. You know, they're not going to know better, even though he's tried to tell them, hey, you know, this is this is not you don't touch this. Kids are not going to always listen. They're going to touch it anyway. And then tragic shit could happen. We in this country, we worship guns. We really do. It's part of our culture. It's part of our history. We can't undo that. You know, we we love the Wild West with the the sharpshooter and yada, yada, yada. We worship guns. We really do. Mm -hmm. Um, And when you show that worship on TV and in movies and you show your heroes with guns, which is fine. It's fine. It's just our culture. Then you have to expect that children are not going to understand necessarily that they're dangerous. You can tell kids that they're dangerous, but you also tell children that they can't eat ice cream after dinner or before dinner or whatever. And kids still want to eat ice cream. Yeah. So when you have a culture that idolizes guns so much, kids are going to see, especially if you're if you're a gun wearer or user or owner or whatever, if you're going around all the time with a gun and your kid sees that, they're going to think that guns are great. Guns are awesome. Guns are like ice cream. I want one. Yeah. And um, whether or not you tell them they can use it doesn't really make too much of a difference. If a kid wants something, they're going to try and do it. Exactly. Which is why I'm thankful there are toy guns, but at the same time, you know the kids are going to eventually you know, want to go up to the real thing, which I admit, I've, I've, hell, I've still got – I've got a toy gun I have had since I was probably maybe 9 or 10. I've never really wanted to upgrade to a gun, you know, like an actual firing bullets gun. You know, when, when, my, when my parents pass on, I'm going to inherit a whole shit ton of guns. But, but you know, but that's it, you know? I mean, I, I would prefer swords anyway, which I have too. <laughs> oh, but like, yeah. Uh. Like, you have to teach kids responsibility, and walking around with a gun all the time is not something that is universally understood as being responsible in 2014. Maybe if we lived in the Wild West, where you could get into a fight in a saloon, maybe that was the thing to do. But 
you could get carjacked at any time nowadays or robbed or whatever. Mm -hmm. But the statistics are not really warranting everybody arming themselves. It's just yeah, it's, it's just irresponsible. Yeah, I mean, if if you're worried about getting into a fight and needing to defend yourself, you know, take some martial arts classes. That way, your body can be a weapon. Oh my God, how about that? You are you, but you are a weapon. I mean, come on, that that that's got to be the best of both worlds, right there. It's just and. And if somebody is robbing you with a gun, chances are they have the gun on you before you can pull yours out. Yeah, and uh, you know, if it's not the movies. You try and pull something that it, it takes less time for that uh, finger to kind of squeeze the trigger. There, yeah, you'll you'll have a new hole before. And you unless can fire you off live shot. in a state where you are required in order to have a gun to receive a shit ton of training on how to use it mm -hmm. and and all that other stuff. I don't know. I just don't know how effective they are in everyday life. Yeah, just so yeah, if if you must have a gun, you know, fine. It's like your penis. Keep it put away unless you absolutely need to pull it out. But yeah, don't go walking around. It's oh, what did Charlie say? Charlie had a good thing about uh uh there's no law saying I can't walk around with a giant dildo uh, uh, strapped to my back, so I should just do it. Oh god, now I, I suddenly have the urge to troll my hometown. <laughs> because because there's no law saying you can't. Yeah. And uh if you're comfortable with it, everyone should be comfortable with it, right? Exactly. Uh, so yeah, well, why not? Yeah. Yeah. Open carry with giant dildos. Yes! That Let's must make it happen, guys. This must happen. Oh god. Steve, you're listening, get over here, we're gonna do this. <laughs> No, we're not. No, 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 no. No, it would be really gross. No. Nobody wants that. <laughs> no. Nah, I, I have a different way to kind of troll my community, but it's, it has nothing to do with dildos. Um, but with that, uh, we're coming up on uh, the end of the show for this week. Oh, God, finally. <laughs> and and if, if this recording doesn't take, I will probably flip every table within a 20-mile radius. Oh, people are going to be really pissed at me. So... At any rate, uh, if we wanted to find you on the internet, Kat, where could we find you? Um, oh, lordy. I hate when people ask me this. Um, you can find me on Twitter at LabyrinthCat and Facebook.com slash NerdistCat. And then you can find me on uh, the website where my other podcasts are. <laughs> yeah. Oh, what is it? What is it? 1201beyond.com? 1201beyond.com for my other show, What the Fuck? And my primary show is Nerd to the Third over on thatguywiththeglasses.com under the podcast tab. Sweet. And by the way, we, we the, you know, the uh, What the Fuck, uh, Lost in the Static and Radio Drome, they are, they are also technically a part of my site, rtgomer.com. It's been that way. We just got severely behind for a while, and we're now finally starting to catch up. It's like, holy shit. I, I, we, we have... We ended up having the problem that Brad had on his site for a while with Radio Drum. Oh, dear. We pulled a Brad. <laughs> and so anybody who, who has been wondering about that, I apologize. Eh, it was just – it was a hell of a thing. But we're getting them caught up now. They should be caught up by November or so. Yeah, that's how far behind they are. Um, but anyway, speaking of my site, um, my site is rtgomer.com. If you want to go check out my other stuff on there, you know, and, and as well as a bunch of other productions from other other people, uh, we still have some of the new people that are still posting up their backlogs, getting new stuff. I think uh, Lady Jess is supposed to have one coming out this week that should be premiering on the site. So hopefully, hopefully. <laughs> haven't heard from her because she usually keeps me informed about how things are going, but we should have a new one from her. Uh, of course – you know this show will be going up there and also on itunes if you're not already listening to it on itunes um you can find me on social media at gomer 21 double x that's on twitter that's on tumblr you know plug it in and plug it in odds are you'll find me um you can find my other stuff also on nerdvice.com what and if you like this show and you like the stuff that I do and produce then, and you want to help out a little bit, head over to patreon.com slash gomer21xx. Uh, for as little as just $1 per production, you get access to all of these shows You know, at least a day before they go live anywhere else. You also get um, a monthly vlog that I've been starting to do 
um, that that nobody else gets to see. It's just for the patrons out there. And some other things that I'm actually going to be trying to work on. I'm working on the reward tiers again because this and stuff, and it's just ugh, just retooling everything because that's that's how I do things. Uh, you got to grow and you got to change. But the early access and the vlogs and the stuff, you know, that that's pretty much going to be it. And again, just for as little as one dollar per production, why not? Um, and also, I would be remiss if I did not mention uh, my girlfriend, Becky Hopkins, who also has her own Patreon, patreon.com slash Becky Hop. Go over there. Check out her artwork. She does have links to her personal website and her Devi to her DeviantArt page uh, if you want to go and check her out and you know throw some money at her. Get some great art. And we're still working with her on getting new title cards for all the podcasts and everything. Um, so, and, and if you're watching the YouTube you know, at one point there will be the new stuff there. It'll be great. It'll be awesome. And if you throw enough money at her, she will do a 30 second animation right for your face. Did I mention she's an award winning animator? She totally is. So go throw money at her and you can get one of those. So it'll be great. Uh, so again, that's patreon.com slash Becky hop. And another, speaking of changes to podcasts and shows and everything, I am actually going to try and do some, uh, bumper, uh, more audio bumpers. That way I don't have to remember to do this every week. <laughs> oh, Lordy. So enough of my rambling. We're going to get out of here. Thank you guys for listening. And until next time, this is Gomer, the ranting thespian with the cat signing off. Thespian Talk is an Archie Gomer Productions presentation. Check us out at archiegomer.com.